It also precludes federal employees from membership in any political organization which advocates the overthrow of our Um, And it's about the Hatch Act. And when I first read it, I, I was thinking, what the, how dare you, do, you know, what about my First Amendment? But wait till you get to the end of this, where they, I think this email should have led off with, the last paragraph not let off with the last paragraph but not put it all the way at the bottom kind of what uh, New York Times does to uh, you know positive stories to Trump they give you you know 25 different paragraphs of you know all this other crap that has nothing to do with it or with with the, the president and then at the very end kind of go yeah well he was right moving right along it's like wait wh why did you why did you do it that way but Regardless of the context of this, but let's 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 read this real quick. Let me uh, it says remember the Hatch Act applies to family members as well as U.S. citizens or U.S. citizen employees posted overseas. Here's what the latest latest guidance from Washington D.C. is: the department works to advance the national interest abroad on behalf of all Americans in nonpartisan fashion. I agree. And it should be like that. In order to avoid any confusion or mis misperception in this regard, the department's longstanding reflected or longstanding policy reflected in 3 FAM 4123.3 is U.S. citizen employees and family members may not engage in partisan political activity while posted or on TDY abroad. By the way, TDY means temporary duty. Okay. Then it's like, that makes sense. Because if, if you're in a foreign country... And there's a lot of political hubbub in the United States. You don't want to, I guess, I guess you use your job as sort of promoting one candidate over the other, I, I guess. So, by the way, I'm going to get to the, the Hatch Act, which was, which was uh, not the 1875 one, I think. I'm talking about the 1939 one. We'll go on that later. It says, employees are reminded that the president is now considered to be a candidate for re-election. Yep. Therefore, any speech or activity directed toward the success or failure of the president's re-election campaign is considered to be political activity. And that's where I kind of think it's bullcrap. This is a First Amendment. However, what you'll see later on is if you're in your job in a position such as an embassy or another consulary function, you don't want to be promoting or not promoting a certain candidate, I guess. That's what they're saying. But still, you know, I hate, this is where, you know, they say, well, you got free speech. Sort of. So, therefore, any speech or activity directed toward the success of the president of the campaign is considered to be political activity. I already said that. Wearing, displaying, or distributing items from President Trump's 2016 or 2020 campaigns like... Make America Great Again, hashtag MAGA, or in the alternative, items directed at the failure of the President Trump's re-election campaign, such as those containing the slogan, hashtag resist Trump, is also considered to be political activity. You see where I, you're, why I wanted the, the last paragraph here? Because it explains everything above it. It is all context, and I just wish that, you know, I'm belaboring the point here. In addition, an employee should be aware that advocacy for or against the impeachment of a candidate for federal office is considered to be political activity under the Hatch Act. Here's the good part. All department employees, including those on duty abroad, may register to vote, vote, assist in nonpartisan voter registration drives, contribute money to political campaigns, political parties, or partisan political groups, and express their opinions about policies and issues. Okay, then what the heck was all this up here for? Wait. Such activities, however, must take place outside of the federal workplace, on employees' own time, and without reference to their official position or use of federal resources. So, how I word this, just in this email, which says it's not law, is that what I'm doing on YouTube here, and by the way, I am not an employee. I have not had a job since I left the Army in 2013. 
I don't have a job. Let's leave it, leave it that there. So any activity I do, not in any capacity of a embassy, consular function, etc., is fine. I'm not on <laughs> a federal property. I'm not using federal resources. These are all my resources. How I interpret this, of course, according to this email. All right? So, like I said, this... Should have went up here. So let's. So let's see how this reads out now. All the department employees, including those on duty abroad, may register. Okay, read that. So you see, this, this is telling you hey, as long as you're on a federal property in a federal capacity or in some sort of consularly function, you're fine. So, and then. Then you go back and, okay, however, if you're in a function such as embassy or other overseas temporary duty function, you can't do this. So, there's that. Now, let's get to the Hatch Act. Ah, here we go. Hatch Act of 1939, officially an act to prevent pernicious political activities, is a United States federal law whose main provision prohibits employees in the executive branch of the federal government, except the president, vice president, and certain designated high officials from engaging in forms of political activity. In some forms. Now, I understand this is Wikipedia. Take it for what it's worth. It went into law on August 2nd, 1939. The law was named after Senator... Carl Hatch of New Mexico was most recently amended in 2012. Okay. Um, so let's read the provisions of this. So this act forbids intimidation or bribery of voters and restricts political campaign activities by federal employees. I'm not a federal employee, thank God, anymore. <laughs> it prohibits using any public funds designated for relief or public works for electoral purposes. It forbids officials... Paid with federal funds from using promises of jobs, promotion, financial assistance, contracts, or any other benefit to coerce campaign contributions or political support. It provides that the person below the policymaking level in the executive branch of the federal government must not only refrain from political practices that would be illegal for any citizen, but must abstain from any active part in political campaigns, using the language to specify those who are exempt. So, which I've already sort of stated here, an employee paid for an appropriation for an executive office of the president or an employee appointed by the president by and with the advice of the consent of the Senate whose position is located within the United States who determines policies to be pursued by the United States and nationwide administration of federal laws. Okay. It also precludes federal employees from membership in any political organization which advocates the overthrow of our constitutional form of government, which I agree on one level and disagree at another level. Obviously, you don't want people working in the government who are actively looking to overthrow the government. That's not cool, in my opinion. So I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm on this like weird balancing beam here where I don't agree with that, but I also agree with it. You know, can I have that sort of nuance? Is that possible? Anyways. Uh, a provision meant to prohibit membership in organizations on the far left and far right, such as Communist Party USA and the German American Bund. What the heck? Oh. Oh. But here's what's funny about this. The far left or far right. Both of these organizations are far left. They're not far right. So what are they talking about there, Wikipedia? Anyways, an amendment on July 19, 1940, extended the act to certain employees of state and local governments whose positions are primarily paid for by federal funds. It has been interpreted to bar political activity on the part of employees of state agencies administering federal unemployment insurance programs. What the hell? And appointed local law enforcement agencies. agencies agency. Officials with oversight of federal grant funds. The Hatch Act bars state and local government employees from running for public office and any federal funds support the position, even if the position is funded almost entirely with local funds. 
Jesus. And then you got your uh, Supreme Court challenges. Um, one of the, let's see, uh, three most liberal judges, justices, William Brennan, Thurgood Marshall, dissented. Douglas wrote, it is no concern of the government what an employee does in his or her spare time. Yeah. Whether religion, recreation, social work, or politics is his hobby, her, her, unless what he or she does impairs efficiency or other facets of the merits of the job. Exactly. Now, again, I'm agreeing with liberal justices on this. Notice how far the political spectrum has shifted. If you're right of Pol Pot, you're bad. But apparently, Brennan and Thurgood Marshall are on the right of Pol Pot, even though they were on the left some 50 years ago. Weird, huh? All right. Um, I'm not a uniform personnel. I don't have to read that. Um, but what's interesting here is that what the heck is uh, no one, but nobody important. Anyways, what is interesting here is that in that email it said that family members. So I typed in, okay, family members of let's say I am a family member of the State Department official, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go. Members go family. Huh. Not there. So I don't know where this email is saying that family members can't say anything. Now I understand if you're, let's say, in a consular house or a consular building, if you will, not in the capital city of a foreign country or in an embassy of a foreign country in the capital city such as... Uh, Bogota, Colombia, Panama City, Panama, uh, Berlin, Germany, etc. So you know what I'm getting at here. But it doesn't say anything family member. Maybe they haven't updated it. Maybe uh, I haven't read it, read too far into this, this anno uh, annoying crap. Um, but what's interesting here is uh, after what I read, let me read this this part here and about uh, Kelly on Con Kelly and Conway, and ask yourself. What did she do wrong? So in June 2019, OSC sent a letter to President Trump recommending that White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway be removed from federal service repeatedly violating the Hatch Act. This report follows the March 2018 OSC finding that Conway was a repeat offender for disparaging Democratic national presidential candidates while in her official capacity during televised interviews and on social media. President Trump, when asked at press conference, stated he thought the provision violated her free speech rights. And it did, in my opinion. I agree with Trump there. So if she's not on federal property and she's being interviewed in a television studio, how is this violating the Hatch Act? Hmm? How? It's not, in my opinion. Of course, some constitutional lawyer will come out of the woodwork and go... <laughs> Whatever. Anyways, I just wanted, I thought that'd be kind of interesting. I know it's been about almost two weeks since I've uh, spewed some of my uh, salty or non salty quips, I guess. But, anyways, that's all I got to say. Lazo out.